The SAT loves this kind of question because it, it looks scary, but it's pretty basic in terms of just how exponentials work. Uh, so the function f of t equals 40,000 times 2 to the t over 790 gives the number of bacteria in a population t minutes after an initial observation. How much time in minutes does it take for the number of bacteria in the population to double? So the doubling is going to kind of show up right here with this 2. But that's not, it's not two minutes. It, that's, that's showing us the doubling. And so the, when does the doubling happen? It, ha it happens when this exponent is going to do certain things. So uh, you also might recognize that the 40,000 is the starting number of bacteria because if T were equal to zero, then the exponent would be zero and two to the zero is one. So we would just have the 40,000, that's it. So um, just try to think, what's going to cause it to be a nice number? Well, 790 would mean that I'd have 40,000 times two to the 790 over 790, which is 40,000 times two to the first. And what's 40,000 times two? 80,000, that just is doubling it, right? So it's doubling every 790 minutes or whatever it is in the story. So uh, it, it, the fraction within the exponent sounds like it's gonna be a nightmare, but we're trying to make the exponent nice. So it's gonna be nice at, at 790, where it kind of just stops being a fraction. So we're using the fact we hate fractions to kind of solve this thing. But this is a very common uh, way of asking about exponential equations, so get used to it. But also don't just jump to conclusions that 790 is the answer. I could easily see the SAT coming up with a harder version of this question, where for some way that I can't predict, the number in that, that um, I guess, uh, exponent doesn't quite line up with what we'd expect. Maybe something else is happening and there's reducing of the fraction going on, or maybe the number in the uh, the parentheses there is slightly different. And so you just gotta be careful that you, you know, don't make assumptions. Put the number in, plug points into equations, and see how it behaves and think about how the numbers are gonna interact by actually seeing them interact. And that way you don't fall for any traps in case it's a harder version of this question where they try to sneak one past you.